The more hits we play, the more hits we get. You are lradio.net. Stacey Sturm, Stacey Interposse in the morning. And in the studio with me today from the Secret University, I have Mary Jo Van Horn. How's it going today, Mary Jo? Hello. It's going great, Stacey. So last week when you were in here, um, we talked a little bit about the Secret University, and we also talked about the Law of Attraction. But let's refresh people about um, what you do with the Secret University. Yes. So the Secret University is inspired by the movie and the book, The Secret. Yes. Okay. Um, and I say inspired by because the one thing that the movie doesn't teach is about your limiting beliefs. Yes. And that's what I bring in as part of the, the university program is that we'll uncover your limiting beliefs so you can become aware of them and then change them. I'm kind of surprised that they don't cover that. That's a, that's a huge part of your success. It, it is huge. And it was so exciting for me to learn about this um, about a year ago um, because, you know, I started watching The Secret probably three years ago. Yeah. Somebody uh, turned me on to it. And I, it was, I mean, I watched it many, many times. It was so inspiring and so fascinating, but I just couldn't figure out how to make it like actually work. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And what I realized when I learned about my limiting beliefs, that's the piece because our actions will always line up with mm -hmm. what we believe to be true for us, whether we're aware of those beliefs or not. So when we carry these subconscious beliefs that we're not enough, that we don't deserve, that we don't belong. Yeah. Well, our actions course, yeah. will line up with that. And then that's when we self-sabotage. Well, especially when they're talking law of attraction is your mm -hmm. thoughts or things. Yeah. If your subconscious thoughts are limiting beliefs, that's going to be huge. Exactly. That is what you are attracting to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's basically kind of the law of attraction. Now, how can we apply this to money, Mary Jo? Okay. So money, mm -hmm. um, when you are carrying limiting beliefs, yeah. It will, it can very often show up in our money. Yeah. Right. So if we're like, like I carried the limiting belief for many, many years until I learned this body of work that I did not deserve to be financially successful unless I was struggling or sacrificing. So you had to work a hundred hours a week in order yeah. to, yes. yeah. And, and if you're, if you create, you know, struggle and sacrifice, it's really hard. Yeah. to be financially successful. And, and then the other part of that was when I was financially successful, I dismissed it. Yeah. I didn't appreciate it. I mean, I paid everything, you know, off, right. Paid everything with cash, mm -hmm. but I didn't save a penny. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then, and then I ended up, so in, in my case, this uh, was, was with an, another business that I had, I ended up eventually sabotaging yeah. You know, that so that it brought me right back to feeling like I'm barely getting by financially. And that life was hard. Yeah. Because those were my two big limiting beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it shows up in your money, you know, so when you're carrying those limiting beliefs um, and it shows up in your money, the only way to change that for you is is to become aware of what those limiting beliefs are and then to see you know, how you are sabotaging your money. Well, a lot of people, and, and I, I blame society for this, that that money doesn't grow on trees. Absolutely. You how know? many of us heard that growing yeah. up? Or oh, you got to work your butt off. You got to work your butt off for this. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. going to have to work and work and work to make that happen. Yeah. Well, and the entire financial industry is based mm -hmm. on fear. Yeah. That there's not enough to go around. That's true. The business industry. I mean, it, it, is just breaks my heart when people get so caught up in the competition, yeah. right? Because then that's coming from a belief that there's not enough to go around. Yeah. Right. Or if that person is successful, then there's less for me. Right. Right. And that is not true. I that's mean, true. your limiting beliefs are not true, but when we, you know, live, when they sit in our subconscious, yeah, we're not even aware that they exist. Yeah. And then our actions just line up with the fact that, or with that belief that there's not enough to go around. Yeah. Right. And then, and then we sit in fear. So then how do we switch that Mary Jo? How can we switch that so that we can kind of turn things around? 
Well, it, especially if you're like me and you're 44, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You've been, you've been sitting with whatever beliefs I hold for a long time. Yep. Yeah. I was 57 last year when I learned this. So it is never too late. Yeah. And it has just transformed my life in ways I can't even begin to describe. Um, so what you do is when you become aware of the limiting beliefs that you are carrying, mm-hmm. oftentimes, like I, I just worked with a gal last, uh, last week or the week before, and she came to me and she said, Mary Jo, I know I have limiting beliefs around money. Um, uh, my husband and I have been married for 40 some years. Um, and we've always been in debt. We get into debt and then we do whatever we have to do to get out of debt. And then we just go right back in. Yeah. And it's just a constant struggle. It doesn't feel good. It's it. And I just know I have limiting beliefs around money. And what happened was as we dove into her limiting beliefs, what it was, it, it wasn't that she had limiting beliefs around money. She had the belief that, um, she was broken inside and that, you know, she was always like the fixer. So she was always trying mm-hmm. to fix relationships and fix stuff in her business. Yeah. And, and it just carried through into everything. Well, in order to have, um, you know, in order to be a fixer, to feel good about yourself, you have to have crap going on in your life. Yeah. And what better way to create issues and struggle <clears throat> than with money? So she was creating her own struggles. Yes. So that she could fix them. Yes. And so when she was able to recognize that her limiting belief was really thinking there was something wrong with her. Oh. And then was able to see that that's not true. Mm -hmm. And then release that. As she starts releasing that, her money issues are going to go away because now they're not needed. She doesn't have to create struggle. It's true. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. How we sabotage ourselves like that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's disguised as logic. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. I don't even think you want to delve into me, Mary Jo. I'm a... <laughs> oh, trust me. Uh, been there, done that. And, um, but, but that's the thing. It's so freeing, mm-hmm. right? And then it's actually to start thinking about, you know, so the first step is to become aware of your limiting beliefs. Yeah. The second step is to release them. And then the third step is to start focusing on what you do want. So the thoughts and the emotions about money yeah. that you want to think and feel. I mean, we're very clear, most of us, when, we're, when we have issues with money or we're not where we want to be, we're very clear that that's not what we want to feel. Right, yeah. But then to try to think, okay, so, so Stacy, let me ask you. Yeah. What thoughts do you want to feel? If you could have your money any way you wanted. What thoughts do you want to feel? What, I mean, what thoughts do you want to think? What's like a thought statement you want to have oh, about money? Oh, gosh. Um, I guess there's a couple. I guess one would be, I will always have enough money for what I need and what I want. Okay, so, but for what I need? Yes. Okay. But- and then also what I want. Right. So, but by just saying the words for what I need, it's almost yeah. like you're limiting yourself. Oh, that's true. Right. And a lot of people get stuck in, well, I, you know, it's, I don't want to be greedy. So I should think more on the lines of like, I will always have all the money I want. Yep. There's, there is always more than enough. There's always more than more enough, than enough for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, that those are two it's, good thoughts. Yeah. Wow. Especially like, and I think too, I've kind of sabotaged myself over the years during the divorce because things get rocky financially when Mm -hmm. you're going through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And if I think that's when I probably started a limiting belief system. Yeah. Well, it showed up there. Yeah. I mean, you started your limiting beliefs, most of us in childhood. Yeah. Yeah. But then, and then it starts showing up in different areas, depending on what you've got going on in your life. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So they definitely showed up in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they showed up in your money. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes they'll show up for me. It definitely showed up in my, in my business. Yeah. In one of my businesses, you know, and then there's health. That's true. Yeah. And that's the thing like with money for the, for the, I want to say Dave Ramsey fans, but I'm not completely familiar with Dave Ramsey. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak to it, but let's just say for the people who, have the concept or live by the concept if i don't have cash for it i don't need it yeah right there's okay because they get into credit card 
debt and can't mm-hmm. get out. Okay. But what is the underlying belief around that for someone to say that is, is smart and is a functioning and contributing person in this community to say, I can't handle a credit card. Yeah, true. Right? They're, what, what are they really telling themselves? They are validating something like, I'm not smart enough to figure this out. I'm yes. not disciplined enough. Deeper yet, there's some kind of you know, sense of self-worth mm-hmm. issue there, right? Yeah. I and so then, true. and how many opportunities, especially us as business people, how many opportunities do we shut down? Because we say, no, I don't have cash for that. Yeah, I'm not true. doing it. Yeah. Or I can't afford that. Yeah. When you can. And a lot of times when we will look at our friends who are like, I'm like, how are they affording to go on a vacation right now? There's no way. Like, I'm going to have to save up for a vacation for two years before I can go on a vacation. And they just, they said they're broke yesterday and they just willy-nilly went on a vacation. Mm -hmm. That's not responsible. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't know what they got going on. No, we don't. You know, yeah, and and it's really, and we don't need to be concerned mm-hmm. with yeah. what other people have going on because then then we start judging and comparing ourselves, yeah, and then we start feeling uh, shame, yeah, yeah, or guilt around how you do, and that is the one thing with um, with our emotions because yeah. it's our emotions that that we are feeling. That's the law of attraction. That's what we are attracting towards us it's not the words we say it's not that fake smile yeah we may say hey i'm just gonna fake it today and put on a smile right right it's the energy from the emotions we are feeling when we put that out and we can't stop it yes right what we get back are people uh circumstances and opportunities that match that yeah and guilt this really surprised me guilt is the emotion that has the lowest, slowest frequency to it. Oh, I could see that. I'm Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Everything right. makes you feel guilty when you're Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if not you being are... successful, I feel guilty. Being successful, yeah, I feel guilty. guilty. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So if you are carrying guilt around money, whether you have too much or not enough, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, the best thing you can do for yourself is to give yourself some love and, and learn to release that because that's just going to keep you stuck. Yeah. So any other tips before we get out of here? Yeah. And it is, um, the fourth step is, is just getting clear and allowing yourself you know, to want what you want with your money without getting attached to the how. Right. We were, I think we talked a little bit about that last yeah. week. Yeah. We get so caught up in the planning that it just could pass us right by. Yes. Yes. And to know that you are worthy yes. of more than enough money always. That's true. And I just, I just did, I just posted a, a audio training on my website last night, Stacy. Okay. Um, and, and you, people can find that at, the secret formula dot us okay forward slash vlog v l o g okay and it's titled how your subconscious fairy tale story you're telling about yourself is sabotaging your conscious efforts to make and keep more money right? we'll definitely share the fairy that tale part is your limiting beliefs yeah we'll definitely share that on our facebook page as well we'll share that okay. link so people can check it out Awesome. And you still have a deal in August, too, where people can get a deal if they sign up in August. Yes. Uh, the Secret University is half price through the month of August. That's a great deal. It is. It is. That's and a it's great a great um, community and forum to come in. And you get, uh, you get to work with me one-on-one mm-hmm. to find out your limiting beliefs. And then you have the resources for steps two, three, and four on a web page in recorded videos. So you have, always have access 24-7. To those resources everybody invest in yourself and take advantage of this opportunity you deserve it tell yourself that <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thanks and what's the website again mary joe the secret formula dot us